Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the 69th episode of PTA. And today is actually going to be a short and sweet episode. I don't have any prayers. It's been a pretty quiet week on that front. However, I do have an analysis segment for you today. So we are going to be covering and unpacking the mechanics of beginner's luck. And I really, really like this topic because I actually think this is something that you can start to infuse in your life regularly. It's not something that you have to be a beginner in order to experience. And so I want to explain all of this. It's going to be a good one. Before we get started, I want to remind you, one, get on my newsletter, get on my newsletter, get on my newsletter. I send a reading out to you every Sunday, so you get to wake up to a beautiful message from yours truly, a written love note just for me. And I have some exciting things that are coming up. There is a new thing that is going to be happening at the beginning of January. That's about as much as I'm willing to say about it right now, but... The newsletter is where it is at. That is where I would recommend um, getting on to hear about it. It's going to be a really fun... I'm doing things differently this time, so I'm really excited to release it to you and to just take take you on a journey, take you on an experience with me. So if you are on the newsletter, you will be hearing about that on Sunday. So I'm going to be releasing it into the wild as of Sunday the 19th. That is when the next newsletter comes out. Otherwise, you'll you'll be hearing more about it between now and the beginning of January. Okay, next thing. If you feel called to work with me in 2022, if you want the best year ever, if you want to experience an epic transformation, if you would like to restore heaven on earth, If you would like to cultivate and experience your very own divine, heavenly, uniquely yours kind of paradise, then Eden is for you. It's a six-month container with me. It is a mastermind. We have a group call every other week. We do tarot readings once a month. So you get a custom tarot reading, a personal tarot reading from me at the beginning of the month. And then in the middle of the month, somewhere around the 15th, depending on which day of the week it is, a new guide is going to come through. So on top of that, you're also going to be working with a different goddess, ascended master, historical figure, deity. There's all sorts of different... Uh, guides that want to come play with us. And from running groups like this and actually bringing the Cosmic Council um, guides into the mix with Eden, what I've found is that a lot of the time the guides that contact me and they're like, hey, I actually want to work with your group over this amount of time. The, The people who are in the container, the people who are in Eden are actually summoning the guide. And I'm just letting you know, hey, this this guide hit me up. So this is who we're going to be working with for the next month. So that is how it's going to go. So there's going to be a lot of intuitive work, a lot of magic, a lot of manifestation, creation, personal power, celebrations, all good things. So if your soul is like, hey, go do that thing, then go apply. That is my best piece of advice for you is if your soul is pinging, if your soul is saying yes, then take the leap, jump, go get it. Even just the act of applying to Eden shifts something energetically in terms of what you are energetically available for, what your standards are, and what you expect from the universe. So don't even worry about what is to come, I would say just apply for the sake of accessing the energy that comes from applying, honestly. See what happens when you start claiming that for yourself and putting it out there. The link will be in the description box or the show notes. You can go to onyxhealing.com Eden to get in there. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. I am going to go over the analysis segment and then we will dive into some tarot cards and call it a day. Okay, so beginner's luck. 
So let me start off by busting the myth and letting you know that it has nothing to do with being a beginner and it has nothing to do with luck. So it doesn't actually have anything to do with either of those things, even though people have lumped them together. What it actually has to do with is energetic availability and receptivity, lack of negative expectation, and the mind not being involved at all. So those are the three components of beginner's luck that creates that that thing that people call beginner's luck. For example, if you are going to, let's just say you've never made an attempt at shooting a basketball in your entire life. It's never happened. You've never held a basketball. You've never touched a basketball. You've never looked at a basketball hoop. You don't know anything about the sport. You are completely blind. There's no expectations. You've ever, you've never moved your body in that way. And I come up to you and I say, okay, shoot this basketball into the hoop. Energetically, you have a really good chance of either making the basketball or getting pretty damn close if you were in that situation, completely blind to the sport, not knowing anything about it, not knowing how people look when they're shooting the basketball. If you were to do it completely neutral without having any mental priming or emotional priming or past experiences or failures, you would have a really, really, really good chance of getting the basketball into the hoop. The thing that people really don't give enough credit to is that neutrality is a better friend than negative expectation or criticism. So if you're neutral, you don't have any emotions, you don't really have any thoughts about anything, you just go in and make an attempt at something, that is going to be a much more aligned experience because you're not introducing anything that will get in the way. Thoughts are pretty much the only thing that get in the way or memories of the past is the other thing that will get in the way or negative expectations. So the difference would be if I handed you that basketball in the same situation and I said, you know, you're not very tall and you don't seem very coordinated. So just go ahead and try to shoot this basketball into the hoop. But the odds are you're not going to make it. If I primed you in that way and I introduced all of those thought forms to you, well, then you're much less likely to make the basket because now energetically you've gotten everything on board with missing with not being good at the sport, with not being coordinated, with not being tall enough or strong enough or whatever. The opposite would also be true. If I handed you a basketball and I said, you know what, I actually think you're naturally gifted at this and you don't even know it yet. I think you're really good at basketball and watch this. I bet you anything you're going to make it right now. The odds of you making the basket have now dramatically increased because I've primed you in the affirmative. Now I have introduced something that is going to energetically shift how you position yourself, what your expectations are, how you see yourself. Everything about how you're going to shoot that ball is going to be completely different. This is a mind game. This is also why the mind is really important. It's a tool, but you have to know how to use it. Now, the reason why beginner's luck changes, it doesn't really, but the reason why it's really common for people to try something for the first time, it go really well, and then they make an attempt the next time and they either don't get as good of results or there's not any marginal improvement is because of the mind. So then they start trying to recreate what they did last time or putting pressure on themselves to perform or getting in their head about their strategy and how they're doing it. Or maybe after you originally tried it the first time, someone gave you quote unquote constructive criticism or here's a way to improve what you're doing. And then you got in your head about it. 
So when you go to do the thing again, when you make the second attempt, it is not going to be the same experience because now you've been knocked out of neutrality. You've introduced a memory. You've already created a memory that you're now going to compare the now moment to or someone made a comment about your performance last time that now you're going to compare the now moment to or you're trying to do something in a different way, you're not letting the energetics dominate. And so then your performance suffers as a result because you've just introduced a whole bunch of mental clutter and now it's knocking you off your game. So one of the things that I do when people are learning to read tarot or when I've had students who are like, I want to, I want to read, I want to learn how to read. What I tell them is do not read the book. That little guidebook that comes with every tarot deck, put it away. The reason that I say that is because I don't want the mental body to start interfering with the readings that you're getting and I don't want it to muddy your intuition because your intuition is something that is present in the moment. It's not pulling talking points that came from a book. It's not pulling keywords from the guidebook that it came with. That's not the intuition piece. So I describe it to people as you want to capitalize on being a novice. You want to capitalize on the fact that you don't have any of this mental energy that is getting in your way and there's nothing, there's no programming, there's no past exposure that is going to be interfering with the reading. So you want to be a confident novice is how I describe it. You want to have a lot of confidence in your intuition while being able to relax in the fact that you don't know anything. It is much better if I had to pick between someone who has never held a deck of cards in their entire life and someone who is really logical and into like researching all of the card meanings and, you know, know, has been looking into this on Biddy Tarot for months, I would pick the person who has never held a deck of cards in their entire life. I'm going to trust that person's intuition way more than the person who is trying to gain confidence from ingesting information. Now, don't get me wrong, there there are jobs for that. There is a purpose for that. You know, collecting information is a skill. You know, gathering things and curating information, that's a skill. Data collection is a skill. Collecting information is a skill. I I understand that and respect that. But when it comes to something like a talent, a natural ability or um, intuition, those types of things, you want to stay far, 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 far away from the mind and linear information, in my opinion, in order to get the purest read, the purest experience, the best possible results. And so I would actually suggest that people do this more, is bring that naivete into what you're doing more in order to get better results. Unless you can go into something with a lot of confidence and certainty around your own abilities, neutrality is going to be the better option. As soon as you start to shift into negative expectation, doubt, fear, or insecurity, well, now you're going to skew the results in a way that you don't desire. So the energy of beginner's luck is an absence of mental energy, no negative memories or criticism to compare your performance to, and this is ultimately what gives it the appearance of luck. It's not luck, it's just your mind isn't in the way. And This is applicable in so many different areas of life, and this would actually serve people in countless ways. Because the thing is, you could probably have really epic results if instead of bringing the history to the present moment or the negative expectation to the present moment, if you showed up with neutrality, it would turn out better. Ideally, you want sky-high confidence 
and you want to feel really good about what comes next. That is actually what's preferred. But the next best thing is the beginner mindset, is act like a novice, like you you don't know what's coming next. This is your first time doing it. If you actually shifted yourself into that mode more often, you would probably see a huge increase in your performance. Um, the only exception to this would be If you're having to recall specific information, right, like if you were studying for a test, well, then you are using your attention, you're using your mental body, you're using mental energy more. And so it doesn't really serve to say, well, this is my first time looking at this material. That would be good for a blind test where you're just intuitively taking a test. You're not even going based on the information. You might just be feeling into the multiple choice, for example. That's a whole other test-taking strategy that you could use. I don't recommend it, but you could do it. So anyway, that's, that's the point. If you can bring in the beginner's neutrality and allow yourself to just feel into this is the first time that I'm doing this, I'm just going to give it my best shot. That energetic pattern is going to deliver something awesome, whereas negative anticipation will not. So that's where it comes from. Those are the mechanics. Get your mind out of the way. Get your negative expectations out of the way and see what happens. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the cards for the week. Let's see what you need to know. We have the Knight of Swords. Oh, interesting. It's very similar to a message that I wrote on Instagram the other day where I was talking about staying in your own lane. Like if this once again has to do with the mental body, if you're over consuming how other people are doing things, There's not very much space for your guidance to really shine through. And if you get too wrapped up into other people's process and you can't discern what is your own guidance compared to is the should gremlin kicking in, it it will just distract you ultimately. It's not going to get you what you think you want. So it would be better to do things how you want to do them, however feels best to you, than to try to tease apart infinite strategies and all of that stuff. Because here's the thing. There are infinite strategies that can work to get to wherever you want to go. That's the truth. This is also why people get so confused with an overemphasis on strategy to do anything. You could apply that to your health, to your dating life, to money, to business, to whatever. Exclusively focusing on strategy and not considering alignment, feeling, and ease is the problem. Now, there can be there can be an opposite issue where maybe you just sit in meditation all day, but you don't necessarily take any action and so you're not really moving the needle you just are in escape mode that has a different problem attached to it but particularly with what should I do next my best piece of advice for that or what the knight of swords would tell you is do it your way do what feels best to you do the thing that is a yes to your body what is your soul what are your cells shouting at you to do and see how that works for you. Listen to yourself more. Listen to your connection to God more. Allow that to be what's dominant because that's going to steer you in the right direction. The right direction is the direction that will yield the best results for you. So that's not something that can be compared to anyone else because your desires and your life and the way that you're doing things has to serve you, not the other person. Okay, then we also have the Knight of Rods coming up. So this, to me, the immediate phrase was put your money where your mouth is. Like taking action that is congruent and in alignment with your desire feels good. Okay, that's the key piece here. It It's not... 
It doesn't make any sense if you're consistently doing things that you hate. How is that supposed to lead into a positive outcome or a desirable outcome when you're just piling, I hate this, I hate this, I hate doing this, I hate doing this, I hate doing this. It, it, it's not going to be congruent with what you want. So you want to, to the best of your ability, whether it be in the micro or macro, remember it doesn't have to be any radical decision making, it can be something that is minor. The minor decisions that you're making every day really, really matter. So see, I, I would just do an audit maybe, or just a question to ponder this week is, am I acting in alignment with my desire? And is there anything happening on a daily basis? Is there any part of your experience in your life where you could do a little bit of refinement? Can you sync something up with your desire just a little bit more? Can you do it in a way that feels more authentic or feels better to you? And see how that works. This is less about exertion and more about how you're doing it matters. And then what's the last card? The last card is the moon. There's something about the results of what you're doing are not going to be immediate. So you you have to actually give the seed time to mature. Or if you make any changes over the next couple of weeks, like if you're getting ready for the new year, whatever the case may be, you don't want to make any final calls. That's what the moon is communicating this week. I'm not getting so much uncertainty. I actually think a lot of you are going to be clear this week, like seeing clearly, feeling clearly, having an understanding of what you want. I think all of that is already going to be easy for you to identify. This has more to do with the minor adjustments that you make have long-term impacts that you won't be able to see in the short term. So you do want to have the long game in mind. Don't grow impatient. You want to see things mature before you start changing things. So the message from the moon is just give yourself time to implement things before you start making any calls, making any changes, moving pieces around, like watch things unfold, trust yourself, but if you're starting to feel like a tantrum-y, I'm not getting what I want fast enough, you need to pump the brakes. Don't make any decisions from that energy specifically. All right, my friends, that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget, get on my newsletter. If you feel called to apply to Eden, go do that on exhealing.com slash Eden. All of the links to all of the goods will be in the description box or the show notes. I appreciate you all. If you have a submission that you would like uh, for a prayer, an analysis segment, or the advice column, the link is also in the description, in the show notes. You know where to go. I love you so much. Have an awesome week. Thank you, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.